Welcome to the video. In this video we're very quickly going to show a little trick using the pots or the two little rotating knobs that are at the front of the Tronus to control the dual rates. Now very recently we just did a video that showed you how to set up the Tronus and OpenTX for a simple four channel plane and we had a question on that from a subscriber so this is a shout out to SpeedComesFast28 who asked us can you set up dual rates in a way where the potentiometers or those rotating pots on the front of the Trinus will directly control the dual rates. And the answer is absolutely, as with most things with OpenTX and Trinus, if you can think of it, you can probably set it up. So here I've actually set the model up, I'll show you how it works. So here's our dual rates model, and if we simulate it, then what we actually have on switch F, we have our low and high rates. At the moment it's only set for the aileron. So if I uh, just make it so I can move the aileron, uh, let's make these to the slightly different rates. Then there's the elevator moving. Not a lot at all. And I can adjust that low rate using the S1 pot. And then I can switch across to the higher rate on the S2 pot. And I can decide where that's going to be as well. So in flight, I can very easily set where I want those two values to be and then I can see what they are. And what's actually happening here is these two pots are actually controlling these two global variables down here at the bottom, and those are used to set the weight for the dual rate for the control that we're interested in. Now, don't worry, that sounds really complicated, but let me show you how I've done it. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this kind of stuff before, we have an awful lot of videos in our OpenTX Mix School that goes through an awful lot of this stuff in a lot of detail. We're going to cover this at a reasonably high level because we'll assume you've watched a few of those other videos before. And if you haven't watched those videos uh, where we've set um, OpenTX up on things like a plane, it's worthwhile going and having a look. So the main bits and pieces here are done in the special functions tab where we're setting it so that we have a couple of things that's going to change those global variables and we could actually set it up in here so that the global variables are directly driven from S1 and S2 but there's a problem if we do it that way. And the reason is, is that S1 and S2, if you just use them by default, they go from minus 100 to plus 100, and you, what you'd actually have if you turned the knob to the left a little bit, it would actually completely invert the entire channel that you're trying to use. So what I've done is I've actually made some inputs called low rates and high rates. So the other bit I've done here is in the mixes. So we've just set the rates here for the elevator. So let's start here and I'll walk you through it. So again we have two pieces here. The first one is for the elevator channel and here when the switch F is in the upward position this is all selected and we're saying that when switch F is in the up position the weight of this is all set by global variable 1. And the second one here is saying exactly the same thing but this time when switch F is in the down position it's going to have the weight of the channel or how much of the control comes through onto the output set by global variable two. But the problem is then if we go into special functions and we set it up here, so we have switch on, we have a just global variable one, and then we select the source as S1 and S2, then I'll show you what actually happens. And S2, there we go. So if we go into simulate now, so we'll do exactly the same thing. Let's have uh, low rates and high rates. Okay, and if we move the elevator, look what's happening. Because S1 has gone to the left, that, if we look at the global variables, is zero. And the global variable can go negative as well as positive. And what that actually means on the output is that if you got a little bit carried away and knocked it accidentally, what, rather than go in the direction you want, this slider, rather than just set how much travel, actually could reverse it as well, and that's really dangerous. So that's why we've done this extra little thing here. And what we've done in the inputs is just way down here out the way of uh, things like PPM and the other channels, we've set up two input channels here. The first one we've assigned to switch one. So switch one, and we've called it low R, so we can remember which is which. And we've said that what we want it to do is have a weight of 50 
and an offset of 50. So what that means is that by setting those two at 50, it cannot go negative because we always have only half the value coming through and it's offset by half as well. And we've also done that with the high rates as well. So this time it's switched two that's called high rates and we've done the same thing, global variable 50 and 50. Now if we go into special functions and say don't use those, use low rates and high rates which we just looked at, which are those inputs which have those 50-50s on to do the magic. Now what happens if we look at global variables, the global variable never ever, if we look at, we're looking at this bit here, the global variable never ever goes negative and that means you never get into a situation where the potentiometer is going to push the channel in the wrong direction and then suddenly elevators are going to reverse in the middle of a flight which would be exciting to say the least. So now if I said, uh, let's just look at the outputs again, well, there's my low rate, there's my high rate and that's the complete travel that we've got. Now we're back to where we started, you can have a low rate set on this control and then you can have your high rates which you which turn on with switch F set on this control. So the key things that you need to do to go through here, first of all assign S1 and S2 to an input so you can change it to 50 and 50, that will make sure it doesn't go negative. Next thing you need to do is you need to go into special functions and then have those controls that you've just set, those inputs actually affecting global variables 1 and global variable 2 or whichever ones are available that you fancy using. And then finally go into your mixes and then when you're setting the bits and pieces up in here then select your source uh, for G global variable 1 or global variable 2 depending whether it's high or low rates that you're looking at and pick the switch that you want to use to select between them. So hopefully that explains it for you. So speed comes fast 28. Hopefully that explains how it works. You can use global variables in loads of different places. And particularly when you find them in places like here, it's amazing how cool and powerful they can be. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.